my name is Ahmed Fati. You know, I'm a visual artist or fine artist, that's as some people would like to call it. I do traditional painting and digital painting as well. And um, I think um, before I started um, traditional painting, I, when I was a little child, was trying to learn from a, an older friend. He liked to do a lot of sketches. So I also found interest in the art and gradually I went to Accra Academy to study visual arts and I learned about African masks and um, sculptural pieces and I found more interest in them. So I did graphic design for a while. I still do a little bit of graphic design now, but um, I really dived into fine art um, as, as early as um, 2010 and I was learning the guitar art then as well. And then I, you know, kept on working on in the fields of um, traditional painting. I normally use um, oil paints and acrylic paints and for the digital painting side I, I do um, Photoshop and then Procreate. Growing up one one thing that's um, really stood out for me as as a as as a human being, as a as a human being like me, I think one thing that stood out for me is identity, you know, like um, I realized that it's 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 something that um, a lot of people around us don't really identify or don't really appreciate the fact that you need to identify who you are you need to be able to know who you are as a human being as a culture you know where you're from and all that because i i noticed that a lot of a lot of our people when they go out there that's when they realize that okay they're actually black people because when you're in ghana you don't really see that you're a black person you think you're ghanaian but you go outside ghana and then you realize that the way people will treat you it's clear to you that they are treating you this way because you are a Ghanaian and there are so many times where we we always like to replicate Western culture any other culture but our own or try to understand our own I felt it was really important for me to dig deeper into the concept of identity as a black person and I try to use the African mask to represent that so basically that's the story I'm trying to tell people you know identify yourself um, be authentic be yourself be a black person, be an African person. When I started, um, I was using acrylic paints, you know, I didn't even have mu much money <laughs> when I started, so I just bought like some three paints, you know, like red, yellow, blue, and then mix the colors and all that. But as time went on, I bought more acrylic paints, I was painting for a while, and then uh, I started buying oil paints, and then I started painting oil paints. Earlier on, I was really scared of oil paints because I was told that oil paints is so hard to use, so hard to paint with, it takes so long to dry. But then I realized that, you know what, I mean, it's art, and art is about expression, so I should, I should you know, be fearless and jump into it. So I, I bought some oil paint and I started doing oil painting, and I've loved it from then. When you're starting as an artist, you wouldn't be, a lot of things wouldn't be available to you, you know, so um, what would be the best tool? Your mind, in, in a way that you should be able to take everything or anything around you and use it to make art. Okay, so what if you want to be an artist and then you don't have paint brushes around? Would you say because you don't have paint brushes around, you're not going to paint? You need, so you can use something because so far as you're an artist, you are creative. Anything around you, you should be creative, creative enough to pick it up and then make some art with it. So I think the mind is the most important tool for an artist. When it comes to art, I'm more inspired by the pre-colonial African sculptors or African carvers, those who were carving the African masks and African sculptural pieces. Um, it's sad that we don't know their names because those times when they were making those pieces, they didn't put their names on, on it for, for anybody to know. But I think they are the ones who inspired me even though I don't know their names. <laughs> the most challenging part as an artist is staying broke. <laughs> Because, you know, you're doing art most of the time, you don't know where money is going to come from. You don't know how you're going to make your money. You're just making art uh, for the passion and you don't know when or how. You just keep pushing until you get there. So it's a really hard part and I think one of the reasons why a lot of people study art and then they end up um, quitting along the way. One of the hardest things is actually pricing your work in art, you know, after being broke. <laughs> it's, it's pricing your work. Right? I, I don't really have any specific... Um, pricing for for my work because i think it's based on um, how complicated the work is and how long it takes me to finish the work you know because some work might look simple but it might take longer for me to finish the work and some might look complicated but it might take shorter so 
it's really really hard trying to you know um, um, organize that and actually see that okay this is exactly how much I take for this particular size or this particular size okay yeah, one thing about art is that you the la always the last painting you make you feel is the best and you're a part of that painting then you make the next painting and then you feel like okay the rest are not that nice you know so it's that same thing with me but there was this painting I did um, last year late last year it was a Kwame Kuma painting and um, it's it's something that I think um, I think it's my best because of the way I represented Kwame Kuma. Okay, so I, I in that painting, it's just a portrait of Kwame Kuma, but it's not your average portrait of Kwame Kuma. It's a portrait. It's 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 a it's a portrait of Kwame Kuma that um, um, depicts some form of ancestral um, spiritual um, sense to it. Okay, so you see Kwame Kuma by the same time you see an African mask in there and then you see some kind of um, resonance connection in there. So I think that's my, my favorite thing. For an artist, every time you're done with a painting, you feel fulfilled, you feel really complete, like you really did something. And I think it's very important for every human being because it keeps me whole, it keeps me alive, you know? Art is what keeps me breathing. Anywhere I display my art, people who come there should feel connected to the art. The art should move them. That's that's the most important thing to me. So I don't really worry so much. I mean if I'm gonna if I'm gonna display my artwork in, 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 in a basement somewhere and the people who are gonna see it are gonna feel feel powerful, are gonna feel connected to their ancestors, then I think I've I've done my job and yeah, art means everything, you know. Art means life. Art means fulfillment. Art means the world. Art means connection, you know. I think art means uh, everything emotional, you know. Anything invocative, okay. So, art for me is like, uh, it's like the way we breathe air, you know. That's how I, I see art, like. If there's no air, you're going to die. That's how I see art. I I can't really foresee the future, so I can't say in the next ten years my art's gonna be here or it's gonna be there or it's gonna be that. Then if it will be like I'm forcing my art to be in a space that it's not supposed to be in. I feel so far as I keep making my art, the spaces that it belongs to, they are gonna come. Do you understand me? So the spaces that my art belongs to. As I keep making my art, these spaces are, are going to show themselves. And when they show themselves, my artworks are going to be in these spaces.